around that sort of thing. But the main focus is body position today. The kids at Lakewood Gymnastics in Martin enjoyed a special visit from Shannon Miller. With over 100 international and national medals, Shannon is the most decorated American gymnast in history. You may remember her from the 1996 Atlanta Olympics, where she led the Magnificent Seven to the U.S. women's first ever team gold and captured America's first gold medal on the balance beam. I have uh, seven Olympic medals, uh, two gold, two silver, and three bronze. That's from the 1992 Olympics um, in Barcelona, Spain, and 1996 Olympics, the two gold from Atlanta, Georgia, and um, nine world championship medals. So, had a good run. Shannon now travels the country, sharing her talent and her enthusiasm with audiences of all ages. Okay. This is fun for me. It's something I do. I travel around the country from time to time, um, doing balance beam clinics, visiting with the girls. Um, I like to stay involved with gymnastics at every level. So, whether it's commentating or um, being an athlete representative for USA Gymnastics, our federation, or whether it's visiting kids at, you know, at this level and being able to help them with the fundamentals of balance beam. Um, for me, it's just a, a part of my life. It's in my blood, and gymnastics is just something that's always going to be there. Shannon's, you know, just an incredible, um, outside of gymnastics, she's just uh, achieved a lot. And, I, and so I wanted her, uh, uh, my kids to meet her, you know, um, whatever goals they might have set, and um, just be a good inspiration to them, you know, outside of gymnastics. Where are my shoulders when I do this? Where are they facing? shoulders are facing that way. That's not very good. That means my feet are facing that way and I'm not on the beam. Shannon now uses the balance beam as a metaphor, emphasizing balance across all areas of one's life. Oh, that was nice. Get your feet together at the top. For me, gymnastics was never life. Um, you, know, we see, you see the kids with the t-shirts the that say gymnastics is life and that's just never the way it was for me. It was always um, something fun that I loved to do and I loved to compete but what I got out of it was so much more. I got to travel the world. You know, I was from small town Oklahoma. I got to go overseas and see different countries and cultures and meet athletes from, from other countries and um, I got to learn so many great life lessons like how to set goals for myself and how to um, work each day and, and stay determined to achieve those goals. Um, Things like that that you just can't buy. You have to experience them. You know, how to make mistakes and overcome those mistakes and get back on the beam after you've fallen a couple times. I always look at kind of the, the three main um, uh, points of a triangle, and that's your building block for the sport of gymnastics, and that's your parents, your coaches, and you. And you have to keep the lines of communication open, and you have to have everybody involved and everybody on board, or it's not going to work. I mean, these parents drive their kids, you know, the crack at dawn or late in the evening, they delay dinner, they, you know, have the expense of gymnastics. It's not a cheap sport, um, you know, with all this equipment and the leotards and the grips and all of that. So the parents are critical to these girls' success. But at the same time, the parents have to walk that fine line of um, being supportive without kind of being overbearing. And that's a very difficult line to walk. It's a good enhancement. Um, it's, a, um, it's a good self-esteem builder, you know, and, and uh, um, we have recreational classes as well as tumbling classes. We have a lot of cheerleaders that take, and uh, um, so uh, um, and I've had numerous. You know, we have boy classes as well, um, and uh, I've had numerous of parents that have have um, their kids have done other sports, um, and um, they've been achieving you know very well. Whether it's been swimming or you know baseball or anything like that, uh, parents have come told me their kids look more athletic. This is your time. Whenever you're on the balance beam, you remember that's your time. So there's no rushing around. You don't need to hurry. Just think about what you're doing. I want them to take away three things. Number one, have fun. Enjoy it. Enjoy whatever you're doing. Have a passion for it. If gymnastics isn't your thing, that's okay. It's not everybody's thing. But find what that passion is and, and have fun with it. And I think the second thing is to always set goals for yourself. You have to have those long-term and short-term goals so that you have a reason to get up in the morning and go to school or go to the gym. And I think the third thing was something that's very important to me, and that's not to set limits on yourself. There's going to be somebody that's going to tell you, you you're too tall you're too short, you're too big, you're too little, there's always going to be a reason why you can't succeed and it's their job to find reasons that they can. Along with balance, another important issue for Shannon is childhood obesity. Her Shannon Miller Foundation was founded in 2007 to help turn the tide of America's widening waistlines. Look at these numbers from the American Obesity Association. 
From 1980 to 2000, obesity more than doubled in adolescents 12 to 19 years old and tripled in children 6 to 11. And it appears that parents are not ambivalent to the problem. In a recent AOA survey, 78% of parents believe P.E. and recess should not be reduced. 30% were concerned with their children's weight, and 12% thought their child is overweight. 24% admit to less nutritious eating habits, and 27% say their children are less physically active. Times have changed, you know. I mean, when I was a kid, you just play with sticks and stones, and today kids have computers, you know. So, uh, um, so I think a lot of that has a, a lot to do with it, you know. Like I said, well, I remember we didn't even have TV sometimes when I grew up, you know. So, uh, um, but hopefully things will, you know, change for that, and you know, kids will, you know, even if they just get out and take a walk, you know, um, you know, and that's what I've encouraged my friends to do, and which they do. The AOA suggests that we make time for physical activity. Plan active outings such as hiking. Start a neighborhood activity program. Give children chores that make them get up and move. Play a sport or enroll in an activity program. And limit the time in front of the television set. The idea is to stop blaming and to get moving. You know what, at this point, we're here, so let's look at what we can do to fix it. And um, I think right now, educating our youth, educating the parents as to what, what is sound nutrition, what does that mean, um, what is physical fitness, uh, what, what exactly does that mean? Does it mean I have to go get on a treadmill, or does it mean I can go outside and play hide and seek and I'm still getting some physical activity? So I think that's important, and it's also important to, to understand that it is an incredibly complex problem. It's not just about, you know, eat right and get active. That's a huge start. It's absolutely the step in the right direction, but it's very emotional. It's psychological. You know, for some of these kids that are overweight, you know, from the get-go, it's very difficult to want to put on gym shorts and go out with all the, the thin kids and, and kick around a ball or uh, risk that ridicule. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Everyone knows we need to avoid foods with high calories, sugar, and fat. But here's a few additional tips. Prepare meals together so children learn how to make healthy meals. Eat slowly so your body can register fullness. Portion control. Americans eat way too much. Limit fast food to once a week. Don't force a child to eat when not hungry. And don't use food as a reward. Everything that I'm about is physical fitness, sound nutrition, healthy lifestyle, you know, everything in moderation. Doesn't mean going on a diet, doesn't mean no caffeine and no chocolate. It just means, you know, maybe have a piece of chocolate cake. Don't eat the whole cake in one sitting. Um, and so that's kind of uh, my message. So I'll talk to these girls about it today. And in everything that I do, I try to get that message across. Before we leave this story, we're pleased to report that the Lakewood team made a great showing at the 2007-2008 USAG competition. They brought home eight state championships.